Um, I'm here to simply revise on the paper science, paper two, 2020, um, which is actually chemistry. Chemistry. Um, uh, I'll do section A, then in the next video, section B, then in the next video, section C. So let's get to question one. Uh, section A, answer all questions on this answer grid we're not going to use the answer grid right there but we're just going to mark them uh question a1 elena wanted an apparatus uh elena wanted an apparatus that could use that he could use to accurately measure um 10.5 cubic centimeters of dilute hydrochloric acid to prepare a sort of sodium metal by neutralization which one of the following apparatus would you advise him to use? Look at the degree of accuracy. Okay, so a beaker is too big to reach this degree of accuracy. Uh, a pipette usually has a fixed, um, a fixed volume. Okay, so you cannot really reach this point. Volumetric flasks also have fixed volumes, but the burette is a perfect one. So our answer there is B. Number two, uh, in which conversion do water molecules lose energy? You have water here, ice, water, water vapor, just like that. So, in water vapor back. So, my answer there was water vapor to ice. Water vapor to ice because water vapor has to condense, it has to be cooled, it has to lose. Okay, it has to lose energy for it to become ice. My answer there is C. Uh, number three, which of the following best describes metallic bonding? If I mean it is a force of attraction between uh, metallic bonding, uh, my answer there was D valence electrons and metal ions. Uh, valence electrons, in the sense that um, uh, metals are simply cations in a sea of electrons, the, the, it's called a sea of electrons because the electrons are delocalized and they move in unison um, accordingly. Okay, so the answer there is D. Number four. Um, lime water is a strong alkali. What would be the net ionic equation for a reaction between lime water and an acidic solution of nitric acid? It's a little bit difficult for you to just observe like this. We so have to scribble some, something somewhere. So I had to write my equation here. Then ionize everything that is not water. So I ionize this to give me that. I ionize the, the calcium hydroxide or lime water to give me this. Then I ionize my calcium nitrate to give me this. Then I left the water like that. Then after ionizing, I crossed, <coughs> excuse me, I canceled all species, ionic species that appeared on the two sides of the equation. So ion, uh, nitrate goes, calcium goes, uh, hydroxide remains, proton remains. Therefore, you have protons plus hydroxide ions giving me water. So my net ionic equation would be uh, A. This is my ionic equation, that's my net ionic equation, and that's my chemical equation. Ionic equation, net, okay, net ionic equation. The net ionic equation shows only those species that are taking part in the chemical reaction. Number five, the sample of an oxide manganese of manganese is analyzed and it is found that 11.0 grams of manganese contained uh, combined with 4.8 grams of oxygen, okay? What is the empirical formula of the oxide? What is the empirical formula? The empirical formula of a substance is simply the simplest whole number ratio formula of that given substance, the simplest whole number ratio. So I simply picked the, the grams given, okay, the grams given, I divided by the atomic masses from the periodic table. Then I got my ratios here, my more ratios. Then I divided with the smallest more ratio and I obtained these Then I rounded them to give me whole number ratios. And my result is that magnesium will have a ratio of two, oxygen will have a, a, a constitution of three, giving me my answer to be um, B, magnesium, two magnesium atoms to three oxygen atoms. Question six. Okay, so um, from question six, there's a periodic table, there's a piece of a periodic table. Uh, the letters used, the letters used are not symbols of the actual elements. Uh, which element A, B, C, or D is the least metallic? As you move to the right of the periodic table, to your right, to the right of the periodic table, the metallic, the metallic character reduces. Therefore, our answer is um, uh, D. Okay. 
I didn't even label that point. The answer there is D. So my answer, I don't know if I should write from here or what, but yeah, our answer there is D. The more you move to the left, the more the metallic character increases. Number seven, um, which property? Which property shows a decreasing trend in the elements from group one to group two across a period of a periodic table? Radius of atoms. Okay, a, they're saying the decreasing trend from group one to group two. Atomic radius. Um, from group one to group two, atomic radius ready reduces because uh, the atoms become more compact. But the mass increases, but they, because of the nucleus which incre increases more, the electrons are held much closer to the atoms, so they appear to be, to be, to be, to be, to be smaller. Okay, sorry for that. Um, number eight. Um, which one of the following elements burns or burns in air to give a compound which dissolves in water to form a solution of pH two? That solution is actually acidic. The solution is acidic. Um, my answer there is sulfur. Okay, all of the other guys form basic uh, oxides. So sulfur burns in oxygen to form an oxide which dissolves in water to give you a solution which is acidic. Number nine, identify the ion which will give only a clear solution when treated with excess aqueous ammonia. Oh my god, I didn't check this one out. I'll give you this as homework. I'll give you this one as homework because I cannot really figure it out easily here. I can't remember. Oof, okay, I'll skip this one. Please go and research. Number 10. Elena titrates aqua sodium hydroxide from a burette with dilute hydrochloric acid in a flask. After the titration, the flask is emptied. What is the correct procedure before the next titration? You rinse out the conical flask with aqua sodium hydroxide because uh, the sodium hydroxide is the one which is being titrated. Okay, it is one being titrated, so you rinse it out with sodium hydroxide. Please, in your comments, uh, give me what the answer for this one is. We move on to question eleven. Uh, question eleven: The rate of a chemical uh, the rate of a chemical reaction is affected by a number of factors. Which of the following would not increase the rate of a chemical of a reaction between a lump of calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid? A lump of calcium carbonate. My answer there was D: increasing the pressure in the reaction vessel. Pressure only affects gaseous reactants uh, these others will actually affect uh, these species but pressure only affects gaseous reactants and this is a, a liquid that's a solid so my answer there is D number 12 in uh, four separate experiments identical samples of magnesium ribbon were added in each excess of hydrochloric acid okay in excess to hydrochloric acid um, which experiment will give off hydrogen most slowly? Okay, um, we've got these samples of uh, magnesium, identical samples of magnesium ribbon, okay, magnesium metal, uh, metal ribbon. So, volume of hydrochloric and then concentration. You have to relate volume to concentration. My answer is A. Okay, my answer is A. Uh, and the reason is that um, um, when you drop a, a ribbon of magnesium in A, um look at the volume of the acid it's big and the concentration is really small it is the smallest among all of these so due to lower concentration and the the hugeness of the volume meaning the collision of particles acid particles with the base will be very minimal and the fact that the concentration is lower it actually makes the collisions to remain very much more minimal so which experiment would give off the uh, hydrogen most slowly my answer there is a Number 13, uh, which of the following is an endothermic reaction? The formation of uh, silver from silver salts in photography. Okay, hydrogen chloride bond, um, endothermic. No, this one is uh, exothermic. Water from oxygen and hydrogen, this one is exothermic. Uh, water from steam, uh, no. This one is also exothermic. Um, if steam forms water, then it's condensing, it's giving out heat. Uh, silver, it takes in energy. Okay. Silver salts in photograph. My answer there is B. You have to supply energy. Um, number four, 14. Which carbon dioxide, uh, when carbon dioxide is bubbled in lime water, a white precipitate is produced which disappears with continuous bubbling of gas into the solution? Identify the substance uh, that causes the, the formation of a colorless uh, solution. 
Um, substance that causes the formation of the white precipitate, calcium carbonate. Yes, it's insoluble in water or in aqua solutions. Substance that causes the formation of the colorless solution, calcium hydrogen carbonate. Okay, calcium hydrogen carbonate. That is my answer number C. Number 15, which, form, which information given in the table below is true about the industrial preparation of nitric acid? Nitric acid is produced by the Oswald process. The Haber process is ammonia. Oswald process is nitri uh, nitric acid. And then we look at what follows. These are the, the catalysts. They are similar, so the difference should be somewhere here. Uh, here, ammonia and oxygen gases. Okay, starting raw material. That's ammonia and oxygen. Our answer here is B. Okay, our answer here is B. A doesn't qualify because the nitrogen dioxide forms at a later stage, but they want starting raw material. So my answer here is B. Okay, for the love of science, we do all these things. So let's endure and go up to question 20. Then we'll break and uh, simply wait for the other part of the video. Uh, number 16, iodine is one of is one of the group seven elements whose use is most everyday in most everyday activities has increased it is mainly used in water treatment yes it's mainly used in water treatment number two are used to bleach wood pulp to make paper used in medicine added to toothpaste to prevent no this one is fluorine um treatment of water used in water treatment um our answer there is six to a although uh, chlorine can also be used but iodine can also be used to treat water. Our number A, I mean number A17, number question 17. We, what is the structural formula of the ester bond when ethanoic acid reacts with propanol? Okay, ethanoic acid reacts with propanol. Um, remember that the ester formed is going to be um, um, that's a, what structural formula is formed when ethanoic acid uh, is going to be prop propyl ethanoid propyl ethanoid so you have to check for the formula structures here we'll learn them properly but our answer here is b our answer is b okay uh propanol that's our propanol there are three carbons then um this is our alcohol part then ethanoic acid this is our ethanoic acid because of the oxygen where the ester bond lies here so that's our b right there so number 18 the table below shows the boiling point ranges of fractions collected from distillation of simple sample of petroleum or crude oil which fraction contains the smallest molecules the lower the boiling point the smaller this the molecules okay so our answer there is a number 19 the diagram below shows the structure of a monomer um selected that's a structure of a monomer select select the polymer that can be formed from the monomer okay that is um uh, bromo one bromo two chloroethene okay so our answer here is going to be this one here okay it's going to be this one here because when you look at this pattern the way our monomer is written our polymer is going to be something like this okay this one no this one no because here look chlorine is not on the same molecule of i mean not on the same atom as carbon this one no uh that one no because look at this pattern here but look at this chlorine hydrogen down bromine hydrogen down uh bro bromine hydrogen down chlorine hydrogen down just like that so it's a pattern you have to observe our last question in this paper in, for now in section a is going to be uh 20 therefore treats all of the following are condensation polymers except for polystyrene Okay, polystyrene. Uh, condensation of polymers are simply polymers in which, uh, in their formation, products are usually more than one. Therefore, the polymer itself and any other smaller molecule like ammonia, water, hydrogen chloride, and the like. So our answer there is B. Uh, we're going to look at section B in the next video. Thanks for watching for now. Uh, remember to subscribe and bye-bye. Leave your comments. Okay, bye-bye for now and thank you for watching.